Welcome to the Masters of Sports Podcast. I'm Earl. I'm Taman. And I'm here with Taman. And I'm here with Earl. Nice. Um, I am, according to Dane, two-time world champion, co-author of the year type of thing. Um, I'm only competing in garage strength, so I'm definitely winning there. But I'm with some elite, elite people. What's um, your deal, Taman? I'm Taman. I am the head of sports performance, strength head strength conditioning coach at Garage Strength. Nice. I'm also a shot putter. Yeah, you are. You're pretty good at that, too. Solid. 16th in the country. Yeah, not too bad. And our country put the top three in the world, right? Yes. Yeah, so all it, three. It's kind of sweet. It's tough competition. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah. It was, what? How was it at the Olympic trials when I competed in between Brian Krauser and Joe Kovacs, the greatest shoppers of all time? It was a great time. My only knowledge of Joe Kovacs is the local microbrew. Around oh, where IPA. I live, yeah, they, yeah. they named like a, a brew after him. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm like, I bet Dane knows who this guy is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I knew of him only because I'm associated. Like, I deal with garage, so like, you shot puts like so far off my radar. But I at this point, I have like people that are like shot puts. So yes. it's like, you know, show you're interested in them and talk to them about the stuff they're into. Yeah, you dig. Yeah, you, you, you dig. dig. Um, so this episode, we're gonna be talking about core trunk exercises that DTC some dynamic DTC. trunk control but we're going to be talking more about core and trunk the DTC is just a given with it so those of you that want to skip ahead to that I don't know it probably won't be time stamped but yeah. we're going to talk about something else before yeah. then um, yeah so uh, Taman what was your favorite toy to play with as a young kid like before you were 8 years old before eight. and what did it look like? And it cannot be video games. It has to be like I can a physical, tangible toy. I vividly remember. This makes me feel young, I guess. You uh, are still young, I but. Young. <laughs> toy Story. Okay. Like one. I remember having the Buzz Lightyear. Um, like the. Was, he had, you know, he had like the space suit. Yeah. But the wings would pop out when yeah. you fly. So I had one of those. You and were... I would always wear that all the time. Like Oh, you had the actual wings? The wings, yeah. So like you could they could come in or you'd like push the button and then they like pop out. Oh my goodness. So it was pretty cool. I had that one, I remember two actually. So That's fine. That one and um Power Rangers had I think it was like Power Rangers like S B S P D or something like that. I don't know. S T D. Yeah. <laughs> the, yes. S P D one. They had like the the little uh, it's like a wrist thing. Okay. So that's what they used to like power up and get their suits on or whatever. Yeah. And so it was like a motorcycle type thing where like pop out and then you like crank and it made like a sound or something i don't know i wore that a lot too it was so cool. you had wings that would pop out yeah and, and a like wrist thing that would pop out and you could like grab the motor yeah grab the motor and then they'd be like just i want to see a picture of you when you were like real young that. That yeah really like that would be incredible yeah yeah so those was like the two <laughs> and it'd, it'd be great too like when the thumbnail comes out on the youtube like something like that is in there with yeah. this one it's in the corner <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so like good. buzz light your abs yeah <laughs> core and stroke yeah. work yeah oh man i feel like i know you so much better now, now that you know like what I'm into. yeah like art was into young tamam wanted to fly oh yeah 100%. like <laughs> legit wanted to all i wanted to do <laughs> just be like because it was that and then like the movie uh like mike okay came out and then the song was i believe i can fly and so i'm like having these wings on watching like mike jumping off beds thinking i can dunk on like my basketball hoop <laughs> you know it's all those things came came to mind in the play, and you were so. a power ranger and too i was a power ranger at the same time man so i was just all over the place i would but, not mess with you no do not <laughs> so i would like think i'm gonna turn to like the big so here's a, a really silly question did you have like a buddy that would do this with you or was this I mean, like my brother would sometimes jump in but like, yeah this was, was a solo pursuit solo straight in the imagination yeah. i'm just rolling through like just creating you know scenarios and situations you didn't, you like didn't just, show up at kindergarten like this nah, nah, nah. Uh, maybe you know show and tell might have brought some of that stuff pretty sure i did but all right it wasn't like yo 
me and my homies were gonna squat up, you know. So. Now, Taman, were were you a big young kid too? Oh, big young kid. Yeah, so yeah. it made it even funnier when you look <laughs> back at it. It's like this big young kid wearing this stuff. Like it might have been a little tight here or there, but <laughs> you enjoyed it. You rocked it. You it's know? gonna fit. It it's always gonna, fits. It always fits. And then that one day. <laughs> Damn it! It doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, I'm growing. Yeah. You know, so I am. Uh, I'm. I'm nine now. I'm nine now. Yeah. I'm no longer eight. Damn it! I'm grown. I'm grown. I'm a grown man. <laughs> Physically was not, but sometimes you seem like you were when you weighed on the scale. Yeah, big and tall yeah, for big sure. Hundred percent. All right. Yeah. That's funny. We'll so sure what was mine? So as a kid, I played with GI Joes. I'm older than Tama too. A little bit. I got you at least by a decade and and some change, huh? Yeah. I think so. Um, But for some reason, the toy I remember this the most, and I think it was actually like an accessory piece to a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy. Really? And I may be completely wrong with that, but it was definitely an accessory piece to something. It was a yellow, like, bulldog. And it was just all yellow. And it was like almost like a bright, I want to say like a sunshine yellow. Okay. Like no mustard involved here type of thing. Like, <laughs> like it, it was a rich yellow that yeah, way. Yeah. Um, and it had like a beret on. Okay. And I'm like. I'm kind of picturing this. It's kind of cool. And like, I want to say like an army type thing. And it was like a, it was a short sleeve shirt. Almost like a, I want to say like a, a lieutenant. An ad, someone yeah. that was like a Colonel, ranked official. Yeah, ranked high. Okay. With that. And it was just, you know, like think like the georgia bulldog shirt almost like how it's like it looks yeah, like yeah. a crop top on the dog yeah okay it was this dog like that and i just remember thinking like no one messes with this dog like yeah it, it's it, it knows all the right moves and it's just tough and like it just yeah. it looks gnarly like yeah, that just beefed up okay so that was the one just this dog just this little dog and like uh, i made it like in my mind it was invincible like i played um, with other toys like there was yeah, e-bots yeah. and stuff like that like I said, it was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing. I had Toxic Avenger toys and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. like, G.I. Joes were, like, my thing. But I had these other things, like these toy sets. They were called Spinjas. Okay. All right? So you, they were, like, yay big, like a thumbnail big. Like, they okay. weren't large at all. And they came in. There was two of them in a pack. And the pack was, like, an arena. And the arena was almost like a bowl shape made out of plastic. Okay. And on the side, like it would open up and in the middle were the two characters you got. And yeah. they were like in between styrofoam. Okay. And on the sides then were these, it was like a square at the top, almost like a, I guess it would technically be a hexagon, but it looked more like what you traditionally think a Pentagon looks like. Okay. But narrow. Yeah. yeah. And then there was like a cylinder on under it and you would, twist these spinjas into it and then you would twist the top of it and it had two buttons you would hit the two buttons and they would shoot down into the ring and then they, and they would spin. spin and the okay. idea was they would spin around and fight one Final, another yeah and then one would one so it's kind of like beyblades i guess yeah I don't know, it, that was okay it, that's that was one thing we had beyblades is like after me though that seems like that was it seems like a rip off almost of the spinjas game yeah the concept in a sense it, though so, but it's basically just tops, just right? Just tops, yeah. Just spinning. things are spinning and will make them look cool and stuff like that. So I was, for some, when I was like coming up with this script and I was looking at this, I was like, I was like, what? I couldn't think what they were called, but I could, like, you could tell off my description. I can visualize yes. it like through and yeah, through. all the way through. Yeah. Um, and there was different ones and you could collect them. So I was like looking it up, like typing things into Google for it. And the images came up and these things sell on like ebay for like 40 bucks now and i'm like man i had like all that stuff like yeah yeah but like little kid me was like yo i'm gonna play with it and i stop yeah. played with it till it broke like yeah, yeah. It, it was just that's broke you know, or lost toy. it you know like yeah. that's just and as a dad now my like you, you watch your kid be into toys and like what they're into and like there's this like weird part of my brain like maybe i should buy two and not give them one <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, okay. maybe like when he's older, it'll be like, oh, I want to hang it on the wall or like, yo, I can sell this stuff for like upsell it for yeah, yeah. something silly. Anyway, That's solid. I wonder what type of core control and trunk control a Spinja would need. Dude, an insane <laughs> amount. You're just spinning so fast. Yeah. 
be like, okay, I'm just spinning, staying on top of myself, and trying not to tip. Was well, one way. If I tip one way and I get hit, you're gone. Yeah, I'm you're out of the ring. Out of it. So boom, and gone. you get it knocked. Yeah. All right, we're gonna talk about core and trunk exercises now. So. I always like to start off with silly things about high school or all I like to call them. So I wanted for the life of me, young kid me, I was like, I'm going to get six pack abs. You know what I did to get six pack abs? Crunches and decline sit ups. You know who never got six pack abs? Me. You know when I did get six pack abs? 2019. Were you O lifting then? I I was O lifted. Okay. I was O lifting, and I specifically told Dane in the programming, I'm like, I want six, six pack abs. <laughs> and I remember, um, I have a picture to prove this. Like it was, I feel like it was October, is okay. like is the date my phone says it was. Yeah, yeah. But um, I was, I remember it so much because the day before. I would take the, when I got the picture was in the morning and the okay. day before I had zombie squats supersetted with banded V ups. Ooh. And Ooh. I mean, like I only took the picture the one week, but literally for four weeks straight, the next day I would wake up and have six pack abs yeah. with, on like an empty stomach. Just beefed up. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh my goodness, it worked. it worked. I was like, how did I achieve this? Yeah. How did this happen? How did that happen? And there, there's more to it that went into that. Like mm-hmm. there was moments it was like, you know, ab, it was like standing ab wheels. Like yeah, yeah. it wasn't just like on your knees. It was you start too much. And, yeah, go and cool. then to all the squatting too. your front squatting, you're catching cleans, you're catching snatches. Like everything has to be stabilized. Yeah. That, that's like, um, recently when I started like training cleans again, I do yeah. everything off one block. So my neighbors don't hear it when I drop it. Cause I had those soft pads. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Crash pads. Yeah. yeah. But um, the first thing I noticed, I was like, why is this so hard? It was essentially like my upper back and trunk couldn't stabilize yet. Like my yeah. legs, because I was squatting, were fine. Yeah, but like I wasn't used to catching the impact. Catching, yeah. So that was that. Anyway, I did have six-pack abs. How's your six-pack abs coming along? <sighs> six-pack abs are not going too well. Now, I will say this. I had a four-pack once. What? I did have a four pack once. I was a little lighter, like t- after college, I was I was like working a lot. I was training hard. I was in the Texas heat, so I was a little lighter. And I did have a four pack. I didn't. I remember that. And then I started. I moved up to PA, trained like an actual thrower. And, and, and they went away. That was murder. Was she like, wrote. Yeah, it was murder. She wrote. So it's more of like a, you know, it's like a. It's not. A, it's not a pack at all. I want to say it's a keg yet. So yeah. I have a little bit. When I flex, there's a little something there. So it's not, you know. Solid 30 pack. Oh, come on. Now we're not going to go that high. <laughs> All right. I would say like a. 12 pack. Let's go 12. All right. Yeah. 12. Like if, if, if everything was gone and shed it away. Oh, there it's 12 there. All right. So Tamon, we can legit say you have ab muscles, right? Yes. Like, we can you, say that. You just have like that extra oomph you need. Yeah, a little extra. Oh. For that huskiness yeah. that Husky. the, th- the throwing life yes. is about. Th- thick. <laughs> thick with three C's there. That's <laughs> that's what I like to call. You know, like you're strong, you know, you're just thick. Yeah, you gotta be three, three C thick. Three C thick. And that's it, when you're like, okay, you got abs. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you do. They're just I just not seeing. I feel like w- you just came out with a nice branding opportunity there. So exactly. people are all about those six six pack abs yeah what about that three c thick yeah, abs yeah what about that let's go yeah <laughs> throwing life thick abs yeah that's that's what we need to strive for yo and a c is a what that's a hundred dollar bill right a yes. c note yep. look oh <laughs> and the more more let's about go. it <laughs> yo that's good i'm telling you see that right there is so big that could change the game like everybody wants six pack abs. You want to be just chiseled up. No. Get your three C three notes C. on that thick. Get your three, three C's, C's on there. That's what we need. I can't wait for it to happen. Yes. Hashtag it. Make it happen. Make it happen. Y'all All can listeners, do this for us. Garage strength. You freaks out there. You masters of sports lift lifters. We need the three C thick. Three C thick life. That's what yeah. we're the only. You better start. I gotta hashtag hashtag and that. everything. I have to put it on Get there. all the throwers on it. Yeah, three C thick life. That's what oh, man. Three C thick. 
yeah, we'll split it that. Yeah. yeah. Fine, we'll figure it out. But Something with abs. That's what it's, it's going to be with abs. Oh, man, this <laughs> is starting out great already. We may oh, be here for a while. Huge. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're talking about abs. Let's start yeah. with compound movements. Yeah. And what's their role in training yes. the core of the trunk? So I'm thinking right off my top, and we, you were already touching on this, technical coordination movements. Like, yeah. how do they work into, like, that's a comp, like, yes. snatch. How snatch do they work all that. my abs? The stabilization aspect right there. Everything comes from your core, from the ground up. You hit the ground, your legs create hit impact, and then it has to hit your core, and then everything else has to stabilize with that. So when you catch a clean, the load of the bar, where it's at on your body, it's right there on your shoulders, you know? So that impact from the bar oscillates through, your abs have to stabilize first for that weaker legs and everything else. Legs and everything else can then pick up or, you know, stand up the bar. So that initial catch, all that force, all those muscles, intercostal muscles, all those things have to turn on super fast and aggressively to be able to allow you to stay upright. Cause if not, you're gonna fold like an accordion. Yeah. Your elbows get into your knees and a lot of things can go on. So. Elbows hitting the knees is like a recipe for a broken wrist. Yes, 100%. It's so scary to see. Like, you see a kid do that. Like, even if you think a kid is close and on a max attempt or whatever, like, you have to nip that immediately because if that happens, like, their wrist, it's gone. Like, yeah. they're going to break a wrist or, you know, that's something that can shatter through towards their forearm. Like, you just do not want to see that happen. And it's like, just nip it immediately. You know, you got to teach them, like, you have to walk up to them and be like, look, you have to stay tight here. Because if not, like, if your elbows touch your wrists or touch your knees, like, yeah, it, it's it, gone. And once you tell them that, like, the aspect of, like, yo, your elbows touch your knees, you're going to break your wrist. They're, oh, they immediately, the very next rep, their elbows are sky right, high. Right. Like, they, it's, it's just, you know, constantly It's amazing, somebody. though, to think how ab strength all of a sudden now is impacting if you're going to break your arm or not. Yes. It's, it's so crazy. weird, like to think yeah, about yeah. it that way. Hey, are your abs strong? No, you may break your yeah. wrist. Like, huh? Okay, then. I, I wouldn't have thought about I it. Never, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's that's huge. All right. So, wh what are some? So that we know the clean is a compound movement or a technical coordination movement. That's yeah. like one of a one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's gonna have like your abs are gonna turn on during that. Yeah. All right. What is like an absolute strength movement? Front squat. All right. Why do you say front squat? The anterior load of the bar, front of the body, elbows are high. It's another it kind of falls hand in hand with the clean. Like if your core isn't strong, your elbows are naturally going to slowly lower, and that upper back strength can play a part with that too. But yeah, you have to have your core strong and tight with the elbows high to keep yourself upright and in a vertical plane. Um, a back squat you can get away with it because your erectors turn on a lot, lot more. Your lats, you know, your hamstrings, you know, all that stuff can kind of come into play more and keep you upright enough to where you can stand up. But a front squat, like, if your core goes at all, everything's going to dip forward and the bar's going to naturally. So I'm hearing from the idea of, like, you have you heard about our anterior sequence type of I think terminology? I, yeah, I've, I've heard a little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. It, um, so what I'm hearing is the abs, the core, the trunk itself. Mm -hmm is like general ceo like it that goes show yeah yes and it's the a mitochondria yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> powerhouse yeah, yeah. It, it's making it happen so yes. it, it's interesting to think about this sort of muscle group yeah that's like actual role like if we think about it with walking like it's just there to keep us upright like mm -hmm. that's what it's supposed to do but when it comes to athleticism like everything's passing through it yes everything is from top down bottom up everything has to go through that area before that energy can be displaced somewhere else or you know some explosive movement so your abs are just like they're the ones all right so absolute strength you're telling me we're front squatting yes but the other squats work oh there's any other squat single leg uh, back squat, obviously, like all that stuff, you have to stay upright. Everything is meant to keep yourself over this midfoot and, you know, staying vertical. If your abs are somewhat breaking and that torso drops or the hips rise, like yeah, it can throw off the equilibrium of the movement and then things can go haywire. Technical coordination, clean. Probably could do a snatch in there too. I have an, a silly question. Maybe it's not silly. What reflexive strength movement? 
Are you like, eh, like it gets the ass? I like a single leg RDL to a box. Okay. So essentially, you have a plate, you rotate towards your down leg, uh huh, and then you step forward towards a box, step on top, plate goes overhead. That aspect of this rotational style movement has to stabilize because if you can't stop your trunk from rotating, your hands are going to keep flying forward and you're just going to rotate and fall forward towards the box. You have to be able to do rotate, turn, stick. And that aspect has the abs moving in different planes like that. What's it, like your sling that you yeah. can call it. Like that movement, I think is really good. You get really the cool. joystick yeah. instead of just the directional just pad. Direction. Yep. <laughs> I got yeah, you. I got you. All right. A lot. So it's like a good, like breakdown of like the abs in a sense. Like your abs don't always just you know this flex and extension, anti, you know all those different rotation. Yeah. Like it's not just a D pad. It's you can move. You know. Diagonally. Yeah. Like you, there's so many different ways you can do it. And joystick is like a good way to. Yeah, you get strong in that. that. And almost too, like if you, if you look at it, like it, it could be a joystick, right? Yeah, yeah. You can boost. Yeah, you can kind of control yourself and go all over the place. So I feel like I should do a drawing of like legs with a joystick for like the body or something silly like that. Yeah. Like that's where my brain goes. All right, so we got these compound movements. There's more, yeah, but there's... like, hey, if you're doing a technical coordination movement, you want to train your abs clean. Yeah. Front squat. Front if front you're doing squat. an absolute strength movement, reflexive strength movement. What do you call it? Plate with the There's dynamic twist? Single leg RDL to a box. Single leg RDL twist. Oh, twist to a, to a box. box, yes. So there's that rotational yes. movement there and there now, mm-hmm. too. Because the other two don't have much rotation. Not as much. No, it's more or less. If any at all. Like, yeah, it's, it's not wanted. Not at all, yeah. It's just kind of more like, I wouldn't say isometric, but it's like a dynamic contraction. Oh, my there. goodness. I'm probably, this is probably like a charlatan comment. I want to see a rotational front squat. Where you like front squat and purposely, purposely rotate, rotate and to the, the right yeah. and then rotate to the left and stand up like in the bottom. Oh, geez. and then you have to stand up with it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's wild. That I feel like that's something you only see in like crazy Olympic lifting. But even not like good. It was accident. Yeah, it was accidental. Like oh, I'm just rotating. Like, yeah. Some breakdown, but like if you're down there, we're gonna. Rotate. I'm gonna talk Dane into yeah. doing it. Front squat five by. One squat, two rotations each side or something. Yeah. That'd be kind of funny. So, like, what? Four reps would probably be the way to go. Yeah. Two, two. Two, two. Oh, my goodness. Because he he does it with the upper body stuff, right? With the press, the turn and press. Bottoms up, kettlebell, press, rotate, press, rotate, press. So, how we need it for the lower body. Yo, who's who's insane enough to try it? Yes. I may do it tomorrow at home. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go. Yeah. All right, let's talk about isolation movements then. Why do we use isolation movements? I think you you use it just for just stabilization. Stabilization aspect of like not allowing so anti extension, anti rotation. Okay. Doing a plank, doing a payoff press, doing um you know, just a what would say And you're saying this from a sports perspective. From a sports perspective, yes. Right. So you you have to be able to not only create force but you're able to resist it too so that's where the anti-rotation anti-extension stuff comes to play so the better you can sometimes resist the movement also helps with your ability to create it okay that makes sense so doing a weighted plank being able to hold for anti-extension or doing um let's just say like a i've had some athletes going where on the cable machine cable column and we'll just grab up the handles two hands We'll step out and walk to the side and walk back in. Okay. But so that's going to try to pull you in. That's that anti-rotation aspect there. So I think anything like that is really important because, like I said, it's if you create and resist, uh, create um, force, you got to be able to resist it too. So it kind of all plays hand in hand. Do you do any carries for ab work at all? I've done it for wrestlers. I like to do it a lot more for the grip strength aspect, but I think it's good just for – the ab aspect too. So I had my football team I had in here two weeks ago. Um, we did a kind of like a, it was a race in a sense, a relay race, but we had 50s, 55 pound dumbbells. And I was like, you have to walk you know, down 15 yards and down back, but the dumbbells have to be off the sides of your body. They can't be on your sides of your body because now you have your legs and everything. It's kind of resting there. Yeah. Holding it off to the side, those obliques light up big time. 
because you're trying to not you're trying to keep yourself upright and not fall side to side. Yeah. But also you have to try to pull them out away from you. So dude, they're just that's lit up. brutal. And they were struggling. You know, obviously it's heavy. So yeah. The grip is starting to go, but I'm like, okay, you know, rotate your your knuckles up and keep those dumbbells off your off your sides and everything's lit up your abs because you're just every step you're taking. Yeah, yeah. You're rotating. You kind of got a little waddle there, but it's huge. Like, that's amazing how you don't necessarily have to increase the weight being held. Yeah. It's just like, yo, move it off your body. Move it off your body. And it's like it changes everything. It creates this yeah. like I guess almost like a fulcrum, a leverage point yes. with now how your obliques yeah. have to handle it. Yeah. It's like Thanos. Like everything's balanced. And yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing. Like, like now, this is we're gonna create that balance. Man, there. that's a mad Titan move on your yeah. part. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, Jason. So yeah, I, I think carries are good. Um, I've seen. So we've gone. Sometimes you go overhead carry. That one's a really good one too. Overhead because now it's trying to stay with the shoulder too, which connects down to your abs. Um, one one arm carry. So I did that in the fall sometimes. Like a suitcase, uh, right? Suitcase, like, yeah. a suitcase carry. You grab like a 70-pound kettlebell or lighter, whatever it may be. But yeah. just walk down, nice short steps, but really trying to keep yourself upright, not swing to that one side or fall away from the uh -huh. kettlebell side. So carries are really good. I like them. All right, cool. Um, isolation movements. What about like V-ups and stuff like that? Are you, See, uh, that's the stuff that like – a lot of coaches will be like, "That's just punishment. You're not your abs don't work that way. They don't really, you know, help you for sport." But I think sometimes they're they're good for coordination. Okay, I like it for that. Like if I get a kid that's nine to twelve, you know, they're just starting to move. Like, okay, let's just see. Can you lay on the ground, keep just your hips on the ground, and move your legs and arms? So you like see this like implied yes. type of athleticism within yes. this isolation movement. Like where people are like, oh, you'll never be in that type of spot. Yeah, you're, you're like, yeah, oh, but. But the coordination, sometimes like the basic movements or the punishment style movements, if it's done correctly and I, you teach it right, maybe I put them on a bench. So now they have, they can't, they have to stay in one area and they can't swing off side to side or they're going to fall off. Yeah. Now they are getting their abs engaged, especially if there's someone that haven't trained before. They haven't trained that long. You know, you're getting something out of it. So and it doesn't have to be for a lot of reps. You don't have to go crazy for 30 to 40 reps or this long circuit. Like, just give them 10 reps and say stay on the bench and keep your butt on the bench only and don't fall off. Make sure your hands touch your, te your feet. Like, that's, that's a simple V-up thing or, you know, crunches. Like, if you always hold a, a crunch hold or, you know, an ab hold, I get some isometric out of it. And they have to, you know, they can only they can't just crank on their neck to stay up tall. Like, there's things. There's other those basic movements that you can do. Yeah. Now, Russian twists and stuff like that, like, it, like I said, it doesn't have as much of a carryover. But if I tell you to keep your feet off the ground and reach out to a point, maybe I put a cone to each side. I want you to touch this cone while your feet are up. I'm still getting some coordination out of it. Yeah. So. All right. I could buy that. I, yeah. I buy that. Yeah, I, I think there's always something you can get you can out of it. have my money. Let's go. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. And also, too, like. I guess how often are you doing these isolation movements? Like, are you, not that often. Not that now, often. Now, like I said, I'll put with sometimes with an absolute strength movement, you might throw some some sort of ab or trunk control movement in there. So, um, I always think if it's like a heavier lower body movement, uh -huh. it might be more of a stabilization exercise. Gotcha. Whereas if it's like a faster, you know, quick side movement, something like that, maybe it's more dynamic. So that's kind of my thought. Like, we'll do a front squat. And then we'll do, you know, a plank or side plank. Or if it's like single leg squat, maybe we'll do Chinese side bends, kind of stabilize the obliques a little more while you're on the with the bar, you know, so because you're pairing it with that movement. So something like that. That's cool, kind of the cool. thought. All right. So we're going to get in away from sports performance now. And we're going to talk about abs for aesthetics. Aesthetics, yeah. Like that beach bot. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Legit six pack, like Jake type six pack. And then, like, even now, we know the other one, the new sexy, the big sexy, the triple C triple thick. Triple C thick, baby. The triple C thick pack. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That's so good. It is. It's wonderful. Make it a thing. Let, Please make it a thing. Let's talk about the this aesthetics. aesthetics. Like, what are we doing to get this? Like, That's where you could still utilize some of those isometric style, anti-rotation, anti-extension. Those same exercises do apply. Because you can't spot you know treat anything like yeah you can do sets of a thousand crunches but like 
it's just not going to bring abs there. Your abs are they're still a muscle. Like you have to train them in different ways and do different various rep schemes and things like that, just as you would any other part of your body, your biceps, quads, whatever it may be. So for the six pack abs, a lot of it is going to be diet related and, you know, your body fat percentage. But like I said, you can still train it like any other all right, way. so we're still doing compound movement. Still movements. doing the compound movement. Not, all that we're stu- still doing the isolation yes. movement. All that stuff still applies. We're not doing much different. Yeah, it's not much different there. Like, yes, you could do a nice ab circuit at the end, feel a good burn, but it's very rare if you're going to wake up the next day and just you know, show abs. And a lot of it's going to be in the kitchen. Are you eating you know, strong, good nutrition, nutritious foods? I like to say I look a little chubbier now because my ab muscles have got so hypertrophic. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the fat hasn't disappeared, hasn't if you disappeared. will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're it, still, it looks thicker. Yeah, that, that's all it is. I'm, I'm more like triple C. I'm more like, like the triple C's. I'm more getting that triple C. <laughs> Man, yeah. getting that triple C triple thick C pack. Life. Yeah, 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 that's they're there. They're still there. They're just they're hypertrophic. That's, I, you're I, right. I can't wait to like actually start using that, and people yes. be like, "What are you talking what about?" I'm like, "Yo, you ain't that thick. Ain't I don't thick, see yeah. no three bills on you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Come and play. See yeah. what's up. Kick you in the shin. That's what yeah. I thought. Mess. Boom. All right. So we talked about compound movements. Yes. What was it? Clean. Clean. What absolute was what was it absolute was front squat and the reflexive movement single leg rdl twist to a box and there's more there's so many more. those are our three those like are the three like those are the queens yes that's what's telling the king what to do yes you know 100%. getting the work done right there um isolation movements resistance you said yes so you can still do resisted movements weighted plank a payoff press standing in place or just walking payoff press um you know, side planks, I think, are great. Carries, you know, yeah. maybe just a hold. Sometimes just a standard hold will be good, too. I pause think. that front squat. Pause <laughs> front squats in the hole. Oh, we Jeez. forgot to mention the craziness, the rotational front squat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope Dane hates me for thinking of yes, that. Yes, because that's so cre- that's so <laughs> wild of an yeah. exercise. But it still sounds cool. I think it Rotational could work. front squat, you know, holding everything tall. Now I'm curious, like, what percentage relative? What would you use? Yeah, like, people could hit. We're gonna and would that. you rotate on the way down? <laughs> or if you would rotate, rotate once in the bottom? Once in the hole, rotate, rotate, and then. Nah, on the way down. Oh, yeah. I, I think yeah. on the way down. Yeah, make it like a. Rotate it already down there. That, like, like, you have to, like, rotate and come back up. Come back up. up, yeah, and then rotate the other way, come back up. Yeah, Yo, that's oh, my goodness. Wild. You get a this lot of insane. control. That is absolutely. I wonder if insanity. you would need like a, a certain type of bar that's smaller to do it too. Doesn't CrossFit have those? They like, do. They have the cycle, like when they're doing like barbell cycling yeah. movements, like the collar is a little closer. That yeah, might be good. Fit more yeah, people. so that way you can kind of like. Oh my goodness! If it's too long, you're just gonna fly one direction. Yeah, but maybe the things we think of wild. All right, and aesthetics. Go for the triple C thick. Triple C thick. That's the only way to do it. They, only way. You just, know, the more weight you have on. Is signs of happiness. Yes. For some. You're enjoying not all. your life. Yeah. Some people. Like the that. magazines get to them. Yeah. All right. Let's go to audience questions. Let's do it. Um, this is Reddit. DL per 11. And that's per P-E-R-R. Per. Yeah. Per. I picked up a sandbag for some functional training. It weighs approximately 150 pounds. But I can squeeze in another 50 or so. Has anybody experimented with regular training programming with an implement like this? Sounds like strongman stuff to me. Mm-hmm. I usually do a series of picks, 10 by 2, 8 by 3, as an alternative to deads, but it never feels like I get better at it. So that sounds like technical stuff, picking yeah. up the sandbag. I know Brian Alsru. I don't know that name. I'm not. F- Alzra. All right. Suggest using your body weight or higher, but that seems like a lofty goal at the moment. Better get thick. Yeah, <laughs> triple C, dog. Um, how does he get? St- how do they get stronger and technically more proficient? Is what I'm hearing. There. Yeah, yeah. Uh, specifically with the sandbag, I mean, 150 pounds. I, I want to say, I mean, that's just, that's decent weight. Like, that's not crazy, but maybe add more reps in there just yeah. to feel something like. Maybe go for like a touch and go to where you don't put it all the way down. It's kind of like flip over and then go back again. Oh, it sounds like they're yeah. struggling with something like that. Yeah, like um, it's I, an oblong object, so it's it's a lot of different. You know, make sure your technique is has to be on yeah, par for that. My like, understanding of like how you do a sandbag, and I am not 
strong man. Like, yeah, yeah. I picked up a sandbag already. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I threw a 200 pound one over my shoulder already. Like, I'm mm. nothing special to brag home about with this. Yeah, yeah. But I think part of the idea is you almost dead it up yeah. to your thighs and then bear hug it and just squat up just then squat from up. there. Yeah. That's kind of my understanding of how mm. it would go. Um, someone can correct me. Like, I'm. Sh- I know there's people who have more knowledge. Yes, on yes, that. yes. I agree. Um, um, but that sounds like the best way to go about it. I yeah. Mean, it, so go lighter. Yeah. Practice the technique. Practice technique a little more, and then try to see. And like what's other ways to get stronger? That's. I mean, other ways to. I mean, there's besides the sandbag. Besides like, the sandbag, yeah. That's if it's feeling too heavy. If feeling, yeah, that's where if you have a lot of equipment like yoke carries or you know farmers walks you know there's other ways to there's many ways to skin a cat front squat front squat rotation now i'm just playing <laughs> yeah don't do, that. <laughs> don't do that yeah but pause front squats um that sounds like a good one i think that's like a that one will really test you you know like could it test your core obviously it tests your overall strength it's being able to sit down there hold for a two count and then drive out of the hole explosively and fastly with intent so i think that's like a, a common one if if anybody is training like that one should be in your, your and I hear a rumor that a front squat improves your deadlift so that initial pull pull off the ground with the sandbag too yeah that could be one thing to look at it as all right let's go to the second one YouTube community boy boy 25 all right. he's laughing at you know you know this person I do not you. know that person <laughs> it's you did I ask a question yeah. best explosive exercises for two sport athletes basketball and football what plyometrics are they doing you already know I, I do but they want to hear it from you the one pogo jumps do <laughs> it yeah pogo um, jumps and what's the other one another one would just be i think touch and go back or box jumps okay good. um broad jumps for distance really good anything that requires you to be fast off your feet like quick ground reaction times are going to be optimal for both those positions now adding in some unilateral movements like really simple as jump lunges or step up jumps could be good or then going towards jumping over small hurdles or things like that home hurdle hops are really good too that's a hard one yeah that one's tough that one's tough you got to be really <laughs> conscious of how high your hurdle is but jumping off of one leg and then landing on that same leg all that deceleration uh aspect is is important there too so as a two sport oh athlete goodness. you f- explain that movement so simply to me with the home hurdle hops oh jumping off one leg landing on the same leg yeah yeah because <laughs> I'd watch the video and I'd be like, what am I missing here? Yeah. It just looks like they're doing this funky thing with their legs in the air. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awkward. But it is, like, really athletic and a really good movement to do. So being a two-sport athlete, doing bilateral movements, unilateral movements, um, you don't have to get complicated with them. You know, you can load them, unload them, be quicker off the ground. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. But I would say, let's just say three exercises. I pogo jumps, being quick, okay. pogo jumps. Um, touch and go box. Touch and go box jumps, and then let's just say jump lunges. Okay. Super simple. There you go. You got it. Two sport athlete. Oh, just went two right like that. How oh, about yeah. that? All right. Um, that concludes this podcast tomorrow. Solid. Maybe Dane will come back from where's he's at Worlds now, right? Yeah, I think he's in Eugene. Oh, yeah. what was he in Eugene? Was it Nationals at Eugene? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was just there. So all right, he's back at it. He must really like that Oregon weather. Yeah, I guess it's nice out there. All right. Tune in until next time, all you freaks. Um, cultivate your power, you freaks. Freaks. Um, Triple C's. Triple C thick ass. Triple C thick. <laughs> Make it a thing. All right. Let's go. Peace. Peace. Later.